Good day, all you wonderful people. Welcome to Adventure Together. My name's Al, and today we are doing part two of the Q&A that I started a couple of days ago. In the last video, we had 10 questions from you guys out there, and today I'm going to answer 10 more of those questions. The first question I'm going to answer, it comes from Andy Stenning, who said, do you miss working in cars? When I was a teenager, I worked in a mechanics garage and Andy Stenning was my boss. So he is asking, do I miss working in cars? You know what? I do. I do miss working in a mechanics garage. As a teenager, I learned a lot from Andy about how to fix cars. And even though he probably didn't think it was going in, it did sink in. And I was able to do a lot of my own repairs on cars with the knowledge that he gave me. I think as a teenager, I underappreciated how much that knowledge would come in useful. But I didn't learn enough to be able to fully fix my own car if everything went wrong so if I could be a teenager again I'd probably go back and try and learn a lot more about fixing cars myself. The second question comes from Tom Penfold who's asked what's the one place you would visit again? Well to be cliche answering this question it's not what country would I visit again but probably what country wouldn't I visit again. I've really enjoyed my time visiting almost every single country I've been to and it's hard for me to pinpoint one that I would or wouldn't go and visit again. I think I've loved all of them in their own way. But thinking about it, what country am I most likely to visit again? I'd probably say Australia or Thailand. The next question comes from Steve Ivings, who's asked, would I like a cuppa? No, it's all right. I've got water here, but thanks anyway. The fourth question is from Jennifer Pearson, who's asked, do you stay in touch with Red Panda and Holy Roller? If so, how are they doing? I do stay in touch with them and they're doing fantastic. I think they're both very happy at the moment. And I believe that completing the Appalachian Trail has opened doors for them and also changed their perspective on life. So I'm really happy for the both of them. And I think they have massive things ahead of them that they're going to achieve. So I'm really excited for them. The next question comes from Doc on a Walk, who's asked, would you recommend a permit system for through hikers like the PCT to limit hiker traffic? Obviously, this is just my opinion, but I don't recommend a permit system for the AT. I think that there's a lot of people that want to go out there just for a section. And I think that limiting the number of people that had access to the trail would take away from it a little bit. I don't think that there are the numbers of people on the AT that would attempt a through hike as there are on the PCT. If there was no permit system on the PCT, I think there'd be a lot more people that would have a go at it. I think that limiting the numbers on the PCT is something that's done for a good reason. I think on the AT, there is a lot of erosion and there is a lot of damage to the trail in that area because of foot traffic, but I don't think it's got to the point where we need to look at permits for hikers at the moment. The next question once again comes from Andy Stenning who's asked, what's the best place you've visited? This one's a hard one to answer because everywhere has its pros and cons and there are places that I've really fallen in love with and if I could have, I would have lived there permanently. I spent a long time living in Australia. I absolutely adored New Zealand. I would have lived in Chamonix in France if I really could have. They all had their pros and cons and saying which one's the best and which one's the worst is hard to say. If I had to pinpoint it down to three, I'd probably say it was either Chamonix in France Australia or maybe Thailand. The next question we're going to stick with Andy Stanley who's asked again, what's the worst scariest place where I felt unsafe that I visited? When I first saw this question I had to give it some thought. Where was the place that I felt the most afraid? And there wasn't any place that sprung to mind. I didn't really feel that there was any country in particular or city in particular that I felt massively scared for my personal safety. So instead of picking a particular place that I felt the most scared, I'm going to tell you a little story about when I made myself the most scared, and that was in Chamonix in France. So for those of you that don't know about Chamonix and or have never heard of it, it is a town that is at the base of two very high mountain chains in a very deep valley. So one day me and a friend went up to the top of one of the mountains and skied down the opposite side of the valley, and we got trapped in a snowstorm where we completely lost our way and got completely stuck on a mountainside and weren't able to be rescued by helicopter because of the storm. And in this moment that we were trapped on the mountainside, we had an avalanche to one side of us. We had a rock wall the other. We couldn't go up. We couldn't go sideways. We were completely trapped and I was frozen solid. I was so cold that I couldn't even move my hands anymore. The wind was coming in from every direction. The snow was getting down my collar. I was completely 
freezing cold and in that moment i was also completely exhausted we'd been out since about midday and it was now getting on for about nine or ten o'clock at night i thought that i was going to die on that mountainside that night so that was my fault for not checking the weather and me being stupid thinking that the weather inside of the valley was going to be the same outside of the valley. In the end, the storm dissipated and a helicopter came and rescued us very, very early in the morning in the complete pitch black dark, and we were able to avoid being frozen on the mountainside. But it taught me a big lesson about being cavalier and thinking that everything was going to be all right. The next question comes from Tom Penfold, who's asked, do I get lonely or scared? I think this is a really good question. When you travel alone and you go around the world and you've been to all these different places, it's easy to get lonely because you don't have anyone regular in your life for more than a couple of weeks at a time. Does it get lonely? I'd say a little bit, but very occasionally. For the most part, you are around people. And yeah, it might be different people, but I don't think I've ever felt completely lonely or scared just because I'm traveling solo. The next question comes from Jennifer Pearson again, who's asked, how has your relationship changed with non-hiking friends and family since your hike? It's great. As I mentioned in the last video, I did get to a point on trail very, very early where I had a sort of epiphany about how my relationship with my family had become distant and I wanted to change that. So since I've been back, I have made a big effort to spend more time with family and now our relationship has just got stronger. So I'm very grateful that I had that epiphany and I've got to spend more time with my family. And the last question comes from Single Parent Fire. And she's asked, who are you in real life? your career, family, kids, life goals. Who am I in real life? I try to be the same person on camera as I am off camera. I don't really have an act. Maybe I have a cadence in the videos that I'm doing where I'm speaking to you now that maybe I wouldn't speak in a conversation quite like this. But for the most part, I just try to be myself. My career, well, I went through that in the last video. It is a little bit of a mixed bag. Family, kids, I don't actually plan to have any children myself. I think the lifestyle I have isn't really conducive to having children so I would like to keep doing what I'm doing having adventures and going traveling I don't think I'd really like to have children at this point in my life and I really don't see a point in the future where I do have kids but we never know things might change so what life goals do I have as mentioned in the last video I would like to travel to every single country in the world I want to get the triple crown of hiking done so that's the PCT this year the Pacific Crest Trail and the CDT next year so I'd like to do the Continental Divide Trail next year if I can I'd also like to grow this YouTube channel I'd like this YouTube channel to have a lot more subscribers and uh, allow me to build a business off of it but as far as the future is concerned really just having enough money to be able to follow my heart and do all of the adventures that I'd like to do is really the only goal that I have so that's it for this video and that's it for the Q&A. Thank you to everybody who submitted a question. I hope those answers satisfy you. If not, then leave more questions in the comments below and I'll get around to answering those as well. If you like this video, please leave a like. Please consider subscribing and share this video to anyone that you know that likes camping, hiking and adventure travel. And for now, that's it for me. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.